everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Zach Hampson and today I've got a really great video for you all to enjoy. I'll be showing you how I paint up this painting right here behind me. Hope you all enjoy. I'll see you in there. Starting the painting off how I usually would start off a painting. Uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, you kind of know the process of where this is going, right? So I start with this sort of scumble sort of sketch, trying to find my composition, trying to find the size of things relative to one another, right? Just putting in the most basic sort of indicators of form with this sort of sketch. It's just a wash of burnt, burnt umber here that I'm working with a bit more medium to make it a bit looser so I can sketch with it. And then straight on from there, I'm just putting in a wash, right? Because we're working on stark white canvas and that's for a deliberate, uh, stark white uh, panel, sorry. And that's for a deliberate reason. Uh, the reason being that uh, I want to do some sort of fancy sort of wash. You can still see the back of the panel uh, behind the, the wash. Uh, so it's it's fun to use that stark white and then use the wash as like a, uh, you know how people would usually use a wash and do it all one color before they'll stain the canvas or the panel before they even start painting and stuff. And that works great and stuff. But when you want to use the uh, wash as a sort of, uh, aesthetic device if you want to use it like that like I am here uh, then you gotta start white and sort of build upon that so then everything I'm doing in this first part is the wash but I'm making it uh, a bit more like like I'm using it as this sort of finding the values right I'm finding the forms with the wash itself right so it also works it works a la primo as well and it works uh, in layers like I'm working here and it works really great for layers particularly because I can keep the wash uh, well the wash is gonna be flat right it's gonna be very flat it's gonna be very opaque and uh, it's gonna just sit there and I'm gonna be able to build upon that really really easily and uh, I really enjoy that because it kind of keeps my sort of working method really nice and fluid. Uh, how everything starts sort of flat, and then things that I feel need more emphasis, I can build upon things that I want to pop through, like in the lighter areas. Obviously, usually uh, the rule of thumb is keep your darks flat and keep your lights uh, sort of impostered, right? There's a saying for it, but I can't remember it. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of where I'm, I'm where I'm going with that, right? It, is uh, is it's really easy to keep it nice and flat, and then build upon it, uh, especially in the whites because everything else is flat, and then I can build up certain areas off of that uh, because it's already starting off the flat. I said flat too many times. <laughs> so this painting was a really fun painting to paint because uh, I stumbled across it on Pinterest. Uh, I've started to sort of like accumulate reference photos from a whole range of places and, and this one came from Pinterest in particular um, and what I do with them is I like to take them and draw out like little thumbnails sometimes I'll change them lots sometimes I won't change them as much but I'll draw out little thumbnails of, of these reference photos and try and change them up switch them up make them look interesting because uh, <laughs> not every single photo is gonna make a great painting and uh, it's 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 funny because you'll see a great photo and you'll be like that oh wow that's a great photo take a second to think about it it's not gonna re really make a great painting most of the time a, a painting seems to it needs a sort of special something uh, I haven't really quite put my finger on what it is exactly that's that I know oh yeah that'll make a great painting uh, I just know uh, thinking off the top of my head now I can't really name what that is but when I see it I know and uh, works the opposite when I see something that doesn't that I know isn't gonna make a great painting, I can see it instantly. I'm like, that's that's not gonna make a great painting. That's just, that's a photo, right? And so most of the time, and it's also beneficial most of the time to uh, work these, these reference photos into thumbnails and uh, work them how you'd like them to look. And so that's kind of how I do it. And that's how I sort of start is with these thumbnails. So I start with the thumbnails, I'm trying to find something that's going to make a great painting compositionally wise work out the values kind of in there uh, if the values I want to change them from like the references stuff like that just changing things until I'm really happy with it right and uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because uh, somebody asked me the other day is like do you do you when you paint do, do you just you just know exactly where you're going right and I was like I kind of kind of know where I'm going right I, I I like to say I paint intuitively right I paint with muscle memory for the most part I'm not really 
I'm not really thinking all too much about what it is exactly I'm painting uh, or how I'm painting it. I'm just painting intuitively how how uh, I've learned uh, over the years how to paint, right? And so that intuition plays a big part in that. So obviously I have a vision and I know where I want to take it and I know how I want to get there. But those little intricacies along the way, uh, things pop up. I'm like, oh, you know, actually, I like that a lot. I like that quite a lot. I'll keep that into this painting. Or this isn't fitting in with my vision and I'll scrap that, right? So it's this push and pull. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying uh, very consciously not to be uh, unbendable, right? I want to be flexible. I really want to be flexible. Uh, right, it's it's uh, it's that famous Bruce Lee, be like water, my friend, right? Because water uh, goes through everything, right? And it and it forms around things and goes through things, right? I'm trying to be like that. Obviously, I've got a direction, right? I want to head. There's a purpose. I want to do something, and there's a, and there's a specific way I want something to come out, right? But in between there, my from conceptualization of this vision to execution. I, I'm allowing myself a lot of space to be intuitive, right? To uh, make mistakes, if you will, right? Uh, and sort of play around with that and, and see things that work, to see things that don't, take things out that don't, see things that do, keep them in sort of thing. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how, how I sort of go about all my paintings and stuff. And the big reason why I chose this reference photo was I really, really liked her dress. And it's actually why I chose to do that last one, the, the, the red the red dressed one as well with the, uh, with the sitar or uh, whatever it's called uh, a couple of videos ago or last two videos ago or something like that. She's in the red dress and she has those nice patterns. So that's kind of my... Uh, reasoning behind painting this one as well is like I really really love the patterns in the dress uh, I, I found like the pa patterns in the dress were really really cool and I really enjoyed looking at them and I thought you know I could really make something interesting happen here uh, or at least have a lot of fun <laughs> you know have a lot of fun with uh, painting up this piece and on top of that the uh, the lanterns you'll see being put in right now or lanterns, candles, whatever you want to call it. They were another factor in why I chose this piece as well. Uh, I, I thought those look really interesting. I think I can play around. Obviously, that nothing was ex extravagant as I've painted it in this painting, like compared to the reference. Uh, obviously, that comes down to the thumbnailing and working that all out. Um, but they were kind of there, and so they gave me the idea initially for the painting. And so I played off of that and sort of... Uh, overdid it more uh, than what I saw originally and sort of made it my own in that sort of sense, right? Uh, I had a lot of fun with them because they're able to add this this really nice, something I've been really enjoying lately is adding this nice warmth to it. And these candles, these lanterns, whatever you want, they uh, added this beautiful warmth to the painting that I was able to then play with by putting in the cools, right? The cools of the outside behind her, the cools in the in the shadows, the, these nice like, uh, these like really cold sort of blues, right? And they play off these warmths uh, so, so nicely and, and they're a lot of fun to see and watch and, and, and sort of play around with as you paint. And so I was like, yes, I wanna paint that <laughs> when I was thinking about that. So that was a big reason why I, uh, saw it and I was like oh that was, that was that was a big idea from the initial get-go that I wanted to play around with that I knew right off the bat that that's something I wanted to have in here right so the patterns and the, the sort of the, the light sources were kind of like my initial big ideas right uh, or inspiration rather than ideas that uh, sort of led me to sort of painting this piece uh, and it was a lot of fun I, I kind of learned that recently that's why you've been seeing me do it i did it for the first time in the painting of my fiance av on plein air when she was out in the garden right you can see that a couple of videos ago too where I, I put in these reds and these blues in the background and i learned that from uh draw mix paint here on his channel called draw mix paint on youtube uh he's a phenomenal artist and a phenomenal teacher and he 
was asked a question about how how so one of the students or somebody asked them how do you change the overall uh, warmth or color in the background once it's already painted right uh, something like that along those lines and uh, he said he gave a really great example of the sergeant painting right uh, it's pretty cliche to use sergeant everybody uses sergeant but this is the example he gave <laughs> he gave this example of the sergeant painting where uh, he, there's this man he's sitting by the uh, fountain and in the background it's got this really nice like hedge this green hedge and stuff and he zooms in he's got a really high quality image of it he zooms in you can see these reds and these blues and these warmths flickering through right and it's really interesting and it really when you step back from it you see this like change this feel and warmth and these cools in the painting just from those little dots and these dashes of these reds and these blue through it so that's kind of where I learned it and then I took it and I started implementing it and then now we're here and I've been really enjoying playing with it, playing around with it. And that's why I kind of stay, I stay super hungry for um, lessons, for learning because I never know what's coming around the corner and what else I'll be able to utilize to make an interesting painting, play on my own paintings. And it's something I've been really enjoying doing lately is, is that is that exact thing. And uh, I kind of left the uh, face for last as kind of the icing on the cake for me, right? I, I wanted to, I start with the face and kind of end with the face, right? Aside from doing some touch-ups and the patterning behind her and stuff. But rendering out her face some more and then doing these nice, beautiful highlight flicks of light hitting from behind her uh, really pushes her forward and, and creates these nice edges around her. And there where I'm able, aside from the lights, you can see in the photos here, aside from the lights where I'm using titanium white, so it's pure white, uh, where I can like really brighten up those, those colors, really pop them, right? And those lights were really fun to do because there's these warmths around them everything's out of focus behind her right as if it's in a out of focus in the camera or you're seeing it out of the corner of your eye so you're able to use these warmths and add this strong white in the middle of it and it makes it feel really really bright and that's the benefit of holding your brightest brights to the very end it adds this really nice strong punch the finishing touch to your painting so that's this uh, painting, my ideas, my thoughts, and uh, how I went about doing it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me take you through the process of this painting. I'd love to hear your feedback, your comments, anything down below the video. I'd love to read them and get back to you on that. Uh, if you're new here, hit subscribe, hit like, uh, hit the bell so you get notified every time I upload. Other than that, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Catch ya.